Okay, so I'm back to talk about Libra now as part of the ongoing course on the Rashis of Jyotish. So Libra is the balancing scales. Um, it's just called the scales in Western astrology. In Vedic astrology and Sanskrit, it's called Tula. Um, it's the same idea. There's nothing different in the symbolism in the Vedic or the Western traditions. It's still a pair of scales. Actually, the oldest text, the Yamana Jatakas, uh, describes it as a, a merchant in a bazaar holding a pair of scales. So you can actually picture it as a, a merchant holding a pair of scales and weighing things. And one of the older, ancient, most ancient texts, the Jaimini Sutras, uh, just says that it's the, the Rashi of trade. And that is really the case with it. Libra is the sign of trade. It's the sign of diplomacy. It is the sign of um, the other party. It is the seventh sign of the, zodiac, of the zodiac. So just like Aries is the first sign that deals with the person, the self, the thing in question, the initiating party, the seventh sign is sort of the midway points, the furthest thing. It symbolizes the other party, the other person. It has to do with love, relationships, your spouse, your partner. And it also has to do with what we project out into the world. And our partners are, in Vedic philosophy, a a, they deal with a projection of what we are. That's what our partner symbolizes. Also, what is not always talked about as much is that Libra is the sign of the public because of the same reason. It has to do with furthest from you, so it's, it's the sign of the public. So people who have a lot of prominent Libra in their charts will be in the public eye quite a bit. They'll be in the public more often. So Let's talk a little bit about um, Libra in light of the suture that Parashur gives. Now we know, of course, we know that we know that Venus rules Libra. It's a male sign. It's active. It's initiating. It's a wind sign. It's an air sign. It's a cardinal chara or changing sign. So it's it's where the seasons change. It's very changeable. It's very active and restless. We'll see. Parashur explains that front rising. The balance scale is rich in vigor during the day, stay strong, dark, which the word Krishna, so dark. Um, you know, this is the sign where the sun's starting to, to drop down very quickly. Um, endowed with rajas. So it is a rajasic, you know, like I was saying, it's stimulated. It's, it's restless. It's chara, active, changing, kind of like Aries. Um, Western, all the air signs rule the Western direction as we have touched on. Moving on land. So that's actually a really neat, really neat um, concept there. What could moving on land mean? Well, moving on land is kind of, uh, you might not think that's that big of a deal, but really it's the only sign that he describes as moving on land. All of the other signs he describes as, um, you know, moving in rocky ground or living in woods like Leo and things like that. So um, Libra really rules all places that are like just flat land, like moving on flat land. Places, see, you can't you can't have a um, a balancing scale work properly if you're on uneven ground. So since Libra is the sign of balance, it actually rules flat, balanced, even areas, and also rules any kind of er area that um, is established as a as a place of trade or commerce or a commercial area. So it actually rules markets. Um, and bazaars. And this is why it's Yuvana Jataka describes Libra as a merchant in a bazaar holding the scales, weighing things. You know, Libra is the best businessman as a result. And you'll see that in the examples that I give. Another interesting way to look at the moving on land thing is that, so yeah, as, as well as it has to do with um, a merchant in a bazaar, it rules marketplaces. It also rules like all those kinds of commercial centers that um, expand slowly as, as, a, as a city develops. So it has to do with like business parks, um, shopping centers, shopping malls. Um, it, Libra actually rules a lot of those things like parking lots. Um, it actually also Libra rules roads and bridges. I know it doesn't say that in there, but just so you know, it does. You can take my environments class to learn more about that, but it rules like um, roads, roads, bridges, uh, caravanseries, roadside inns. All these sorts of things, um, yeah, these things all are ruled by Venus and uh, Libra. So that's very revealing sutra, actually. And then after that, it says killing, destroying. 
So Libra is actually a big killer and destroyer. You would not think that. Uh, you think Venus is just all about peace and love and harmony. Yes, but that's when Libra is doing well. But when Libra is afflicted, that is not always the case. And this person is not able to feel like things are balanced and even. Thus, they can cause a lot of problems in the world, wherever they go in the world. So when Libra is healthy, one is not going to be killing and destroying, or they're going to be doing that in a very healthy way based on trade and interaction. And so when Libra and when Venus is strong, the Lord, one does always want to have win-win situations for both parties, and that's ideal. And so that's why Libra is the best, the best businessman. And Venus and Libra are the, are the energies that deal with, you know, making sure you do well, but also the other person does well. And this is what's really cool is that on another deeper level, Libra even symbolizes like nature and how, human, how we humans interact with nature and how we interact with life itself as a result. And to get even deeper, if you guys are going to allow that, what is nature? Nature is the goddess. The goddess aspect is nature. So Libra is the goddess. That's why it's ruled by Venus. Another reason, at least. So the way we treat Venus, the way we treat the goddess, the way we treat Libra is all the same thing. And how we treat that determines how we feel about life and, and the harmony we feel. And so if that's good, we do well. But if that's afflicted, we feel life's unfair. We feel afflicted. We go about wanting to kill and destroy. You see? So actually, a lot of the people who've caused a lot of problems in the world are people who have some afflicted planets in Libra. And the most at peace people on the planet or the most wise, the most happy people are people who usually have really strong Libra energy. And uh, yeah, so the best planets to have in Libra is Saturn because it's exalted there, which will make you really, really, you know, it shows you've done really well with your past karma with regards to trading, interacting, working with nature, working with the goddess energy, you see? Um, and you know, that Saturn exalted, that's the best Venus there. It's her own sign. Venus is proud there. That's also really good. Mercury does well there too. Um, the sun is the worst plant to have there. It's actually debilitating Libra. So Libra sun sign can have trouble with some of these things that we'll discuss or get mixed up and get confused. Um, when it comes to, you know, like where to, where, where the sun needs to like live its destiny and do its dharma versus where it, when it should enjoy life and just, you know, have harmony and, and all that stuff. Have, have fun, you know? So that's the thing is Libra is about having fun. And so sun isn't really a plan of having fun. So it doesn't always do that well there. Jupiter is also starved there and doesn't do that well there. Um, I believe all the other planets, there's no other major thing you need to know about with that. Um, so as I explained, you know, like Adolf Hitler, he was a Libra ascendant. So he kind of did a lot of killing and destroying. The avatar of Venus is a avatar that Par uh, Parashurama, it was this avatar that basically went around um, killing all of the corrupt kshatriyas or warrior or kings or all the corrupt pol political rulers of his time. So yeah, so Libra is very much about like fairness and about, you know, making a uh, removing the corruption when it's healthy in the world and making everything like in a smooth win-win harmonious life down here on planet earth. That's the good side of Libra. When it's afflicted though, it's not always that great. So you need to know that. And then also Libra is a sudra or a servant sign, um, medium body, just a normal body. It's two footed. So it's intellectual. And also, you know, these biped signs, they deal with, you know, being an individual as well. And the air signs are like that. Um, so it's, it's, it's intelligent, humanistic, individual, and it's ruled by Venus. Yep. Okay, so now I'm gonna um, show you guys some examples. So this is the chart of Bill Clinton. Um, he's, a, he's a very famous politician, very well known. He had a lot of big trade and interaction in the world. Um, he's been very successful with uh, making money with with you know doing that uh, as a president he was well known for balancing the budget for getting our finances better as a country in the United States but but in terms of ethics his ethics are not very good and so you see Jupiter there is does not do well in Libra Jupiter is a plan of doing the right thing of goodness flowing through you of just being a really dharmic 
a righteous person. Well, Jupiter is in a great enemy of Ashta here, where it is considered to be miserable um, if you learn about the Avashtas. Venus is strongly starving Jupiter there. Um, and what what are the things that happens when Venus is really strongly Jupiter uh, strong, strongly uh, afflicting Jupiter? Well, Jupiter, your happiness uh, gets interfered with by Venus, so it needs all this Venus, all this money, wealth, women, luxury, all this stuff, status to make you happy, and it's never enough. And so it's uh, the Savasht is not ideal. So Bill Clinton, I can't say is one of the ideal. V uh, Libra people, but he did have at least a strong Venus. So from some material standpoints, he could have, he was good on that level. Um, Adolf Hitler. So here's your, here's your classic Libra example, ruling planets in the eighth. Notice Jupiter's debilitated again. So, um, yeah, so, uh, and it's with K2 and that can cause a lot of problems as well. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this chart, but this is again, an afflicted, not healthy Libra individual who caused a lot of problems in the world. Um, this is a uh, Tulsi Gabbard who is running for president. She, um, a lot of yogis and people following this will probably be familiar with her because she is a, the first candidate to run and she's a, that is, um, has a Hindu background in any way. She's vegetarian. She reads the Bhagavad Gita. She's very, very ethical. No one can really deny that about her. And so if you look, you see, yeah, Jupiter is starved here but there's an exalted Saturn there, which is really great. And if you learn about the Avastas, you'll learn that, oh, okay, so Jupiter is also getting a 100% aspect of delight from Sun and Mars, but is also starved by Venus and Mercury. But overall, that exalted Saturn, Jagrat Mars, it's a lot of high merit in this chart. You know, you can see Mars is in its own sign, Sun is exalted, that's showing really good karma, Saturn's exalted. So um, you notice the lunar nodes, both the lords of the nodes are exalted. I'm not trying to get political here. I don't care. Every, whoever wins the election is who Vishnu wanted to win the election and, or whatever, so who am I to say? But, um, but this is kind of neat because she is very, very ethical. You know what I mean? And she served in the military and is just good humanistic quality. So I looked at her chart and I was like, oh, that's really cool that she has Saturn exalted because that makes sense, right? Um, Saturn exalts in Libra will basically prevent a person from causing a lot of terrible karma in the world because it means that someone has been doing good trades and good diplomacy and good win-win, you know, trades throughout their many lives. And so they've come with an exalted Saturn. So they're going to have a lot of blessings there, probably, you know, um, just generally speaking. So this is Paramhansa Yogananda. So he is just one of the most spiritually perfect beings that we've ever known. Um, and if you look at his birth chart, it reflects that so, so tremendously all the way deep down in the Vargas, but this isn't an advanced course. This is not an advanced course. So I'm not going into that, but look at his Libra sign exalted. When he left to go to India, or sorry, to go to America. Remember, Libra is a sign of foreign lands and traveling to distant lands. It's the furthest sign from you. So that also, that Saturn exalted there in the third house of travel could have been hinting at him doing a lot of travel in his life. And when he did that, his guru told him, you know, you, you need to go now, like leave now, all the doors will be open to you. And he said, your lot for, for making friends and meeting new people is really great. And there are Westerners that are eager to hear you. You know what I mean? And that his, his guru was an advanced astrologer. Sri Yukteswar was a, like, you know, if Sri Yukteswar had been born in a Brahmin family, he would have been a very famous astrologer, but he wasn't. He was born in a Vaishya family, a merchant family. So that's the only reason we don't really hear about him a lot still to this day. But um, as an astrologer, at least, um, he's known more as a guru. So yeah, his, his guru looked at his chart and everything and predicted that he would travel to foreign lands to the West and teach yoga. And um, there's a lot of stuff in this chart that speaks to that. But so yeah, you see the Saturn exalted and Yogananda had a definitely a lot of high merit with trading and interacting with people. All right, what is this chart? This is the chart of Henry Ford. So Henry Ford, um, I'm not saying he was a great ethical guy because he wasn't really. And you see, he has the Jupiter Saturn thing. He has an exalted Saturn. So he did do a lot of good for the world. He created the Model T car. He, he moved the, you know, helped us 
he was a titan of industry and yes yeah, so we can see that there's some good merit that he had there but you notice that that jupiter just doesn't have that delight of sun and mars they're not giving a good close enough aspect sun is awake that helps a little bit it's just not there though you see um the lord of his rahu is that afflicted jupiter you know um his Venus is debilitated, the Lord of Libra, it's debilitated, you know, so there's kind of a lot more of the afflictions, although he does have an exalted Saturn, so he did do some good work, um, you know, Saturn has to do with, a, you know, making, doing, accomplishing great deeds that will help the world, but, but he was also, like, racist and a lot of, had a lot of issues, too, that you could see in his chart, um, this is Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett's considered to be one of the more respected, super rich, like mega rich people, um, because he wants to kind of give more of his money away to charity. And he's very generous and all about that. So you notice that he has a proud, he has a strong Venus, not proud, actually, he has a strong Venus in its own sign with Mercury and K2 there. But since the Lord of K2 is Venus, since they're with K2 in Venus science, it's a pretty strong K2, right? So this makes a lot of sense. This guy uh, learned a lot about investments and trading and how to make money really early on. And he made a good life for himself as a result. And he's not one of the most unethical people. And you can see that, okay, you know, his, he's got an exalted Jupiter. Mars is debilitated, but when it's with Jupiter and Cancer, that's really overall good. Um, his Saturn is, you know, in its own sign as well. So um, while K2 and Libra can make you, pro he probably focuses more on that than he needs to. That's, that's a little bit of a healthier Libra Rashi. Um, and this is Rupert Murdoch. This is the chart of Rupert Murdoch. He was also born around the same time with Jupiter exalted and K2 and Libra. And he has Saturn in his own sign as well, quite strong. Um, the Lord of, of, of K2 is not so dignified though. It's, it's Venus. It's delighted, which is good, and it's aspected by that Jupiter, so that's good, but um, not quite as as healthy, you know, of a of a Libra Rashi here, and that K two there. So without K two, you know, without K 2s Lord being as strong, we can see that he gets well. He's done a lot more unethical things to make his money, we could say, um, and he's kind of considered one of the more, I guess, corrupt media moguls, um, and. Or, you know, just looking at it like this, K2 is in Libra on the 10th house with the 11th cusp. So he's obsessed with trade to make money, you know, in his status and it never satisfies him, you know? It would have to be like that because otherwise, why wouldn't he have stopped when he bought his first super successful newspaper, you know? But now he's one of these people who bought so much of the media. It's kind of like one of these things where it's like, at, you know, you can tell at what point are you gonna be at peace? But it's also worth saying that, you know, Rupert Murdoch does practice meditation every day. He's one of those mega, you know, billionaire people who at least was smart enough to know the value of learning to meditate. So you can see that that Jupiter, that exalted Jupiter and the strong Saturn are a part of his life, you know, on some level. But I'm not saying I think he's a great role model. <laughs> not like this next chart. Um, this next chart is Meher Baba. He is considered the avatar of the age. That's why I wore this shirt. Um, and he is a tremendous, probably the best role model you're ever going to find, uh, in the last century, at least to have lived. Um, he was an Aquarius. He had his ruling planet Saturn in Libra and it's his Atma Karaka. So the, all the self factors that are him, his ruling planet and his Atma Karaka are exalted in Libra. So this is a man that it's hard to even say, man, this is an entity that whatever it was before it incarnated here was the highest level of being able to interact with nature harmoniously and create win-win situations for both. So I don't want to like, you know, because I, I am, I'm a big lover of Meher Baba, but he's not like, not everyone in India even knows about him that well, but he is considered the avatar of the age. He is considered Lord Ram, Lord, you know, Krishna incarnated again in a body. He's that, and he is considered to be that same, that, that, thatness, which you can't describe. So anyways, if you're interested in that, you can see from his chart that he very well likely is what he says he is. 
um, and no one has been ever able to, you know, make any dispute or ever really make a legitimate claim at his, or, or, you know, no one has ever been able to take down his legitimacy. And at the time there were like at least 70 other people claiming to be the avatar and there've been so many and they've all come and gone. And you see when there's Saturn's very strong, one stands the test of time. And Saturn has said, it's said that when Saturn is pleased with you, he'll make you remembered like more and more as time goes on. Um, and they say that when Saturn is really afflicted, one will, you know, Saturn, when it's really, really unhappy with you, they say, Saturn will remove every trace of your existence from the world. That's what they say. Like he will delete the fact that you even existed, um, will be gone if you weren't, you know, if he wasn't pleased with you. So since, you know, he left his body in the early 70s, he's become only more and more respected and considered to be legitimate as the avatar. So I wanted to end it on that one. That's a good example. You see, um, and you see the, the K2 there is in Libra again, so he could be two Libra. But again, notice that the Lord, Venus, is in the ascendant, really strong retrograde, and it, they're in a first and ninth house interchange, which is a Maha Yoga, or a grand um, yoga for Dharma and fortune, when the first and ninth lords interchange. Lots of other great meritable things in his chart, but that's not what this is about. So this is a good example of Libra and how Libra works from that Vedic astrology angle. So I hope you guys appreciate it. Take care.